Bitcoin is different because it has this culture of being online at all costs and being resilient to classes of attacks that none of these other altcoins are really thinking about. And in some cases, this is really visible, right? In some cases, there are altcoins that just like fall flat on their face or just like can't even get off the ground. Even without a lot of usage, they just don't really work. For example, I think last year, Elon Musk tweeted something about Dogecoin and all of a sudden there was a flood of users on the network. And somebody who I know personally set up a Dogecoin node and found that it didn't sync because of some resource limitation or whatever. So then he talked to a few core developers and he patched it and set up a node. And then he personally was basically the single node serving the Dogecoin network for a little while, for a couple of days until he got bored and shut it off, right? And so Doge is a meme. Of course, Doge is not really trying, so it's unfair of me to pick on them. And there are worse examples that I could pick on if anybody had heard of them. And then you get systems like Ethereum, maybe, where Ethereum did very well until it got a lot of usage. And it's only kind of recently that you're sort of starting to see the poor design decisions that were made at various levels of the system lead to scalability crises and lead to tons of reorgs on the blockchain and lead to an inability to validate the historic blockchain and then also lead to, to very high fees, even if you don't care about any of that. But even more than that, even deeper than the kind of visible failures that you see, within the Bitcoin ecosystem, there are a lot of old school cypherpunks who think a lot about how to evade existing censorship mechanisms. So one example that I heard about recently was there was concern about getting Bitcoin transactions across the Great Firewall of China. And one solution that came up was a radio station that would play classical music. Encoded in this classical music were actually Bitcoin transactions and Bitcoin blocks. So there was a way that you could kind of sneak data across the firewall, just hidden as ordinary radio traffic. And today, a great example of that actually is Blockstream Satellite Service. And the cool thing there is that if you're in a world where you're not supposed to be dealing with Bitcoin, if you're not, if it's not legal to work with Bitcoin, and if you're broadcasting things through the air, well, that's physically detectable. But if you're just reading stuff that's being beamed from satellites, nobody can tell if you're doing that or not. And that's the kind of thing where conceptually, I mean, it makes sense that you would use a satellite service to do that. But then even in the fine grained details, like what kind of error correcting codes do we do? How often do we repeat the blockchain? How can we compress transactions in order to more effectively fit onto the limited satellite bandwidth? How can we improve the redundancy of the system? How can we improve the coverage of the system? How can we do like transaction transmissions. So there's all these questions that were asked that a lot of engineering time went into from the Bitcoin community, kind of really seriously thinking about how could this system fail? How could it be attacked? I spent a lot of time, especially in the Boston area, around people doing all sorts of altcoin development and building cool stuff. And a lot of it's cool. It's big and exciting and it's new and novel and stuff, but it's cool in a uh, building cool stuff in a computer science way. Whereas when I talk to Bitcoin people, this is cool in a security model. Way. This is cool in like we're building systems that will like withstand a Terminator attack kind of way. And that's a different kind of innovation. And there's just a lot of it in the Bitcoin space that I just don't see in other altcoin spaces. And you see it reflected in which systems work and which systems survive attacks and which don't.